Hi, welcome uh, to the Retirement Railroad, Matinee Modeling, Tip of the Day. I'm Steve, and uh, today we're going to look at uh, a uh, new and uh, more powerful static grass applicator. Okay? Um, and what do I mean by that? Uh, Luke Towen um, has a video on YouTube uh, on uh, how he made a new powerful static grass applicator. Larry Puckett, the DCC guy, has uh, a new and improved version of the static grass applicator based upon uh, Luke Towen's original design. Uh, just some modifications made to it. And uh, mine is basically the same as uh, Larry Puckett's with a couple minor uh, little, what I'll call enhancements that I want wanted in it. So, and it'll cost about thirty dollars, depending, give or take, depending on how much of the uh, uh, item supplies you actually may already have on hand. Now, keep in mind switches, LED bulbs, 9 volt connectors, all of that you have to buy in more than one. Okay, So all three of those you buy in a pack of five. So if you bought uh, five ion generators, they'd be about 30 bucks a piece. Okay? Otherwise it's going to be more. <laughs> uh, but uh, based upon the results Luke Cowan uh, gets and Larry Puckett gets, it's uh, well worth the investment. I'll find out when I address the uh, farm scene and, and the uh, pasture land for my cows. All right, so you can see over my shoulder, I've uh, got the island uh, work area set up and uh, we'll go over there and, and I'll walk you through the process. Stay tuned. Here we go. Um, this is the my original static grass applicator, you know, just a strainer basket, and, and it has, uh, uh, I think this one has two C cell batteries, these, two D cell batteries in it, uh, which is about one, three volts. Okay, the new one will be nine volts, and actually, you can even make it to connect to 12 to a 12 volt power supply. Uh, but I'm going to use it as 9 volts and be a little more portable than being hardwired to a 9 volt power uh, to a 12 volt power supply. So, a little Rubbermaid style container, screws on, screws off. Uh, some inch and a half PVC pipe with two two connectors. Uh, bolt, washers, nuts. Little LED light again, these come in five pack of five. Nine volt connector again, it comes in a pack of five, and a momentary push button switch. And I stress momentary, All right? A lot of switches you press them and they stay on. That's not what I want, I want it only on when I'm holding the button down. Now, you can go with cheaper LEDs and cheaper switches. Um, but what I found, especially on this one, was the cheaper buttons don't last. Okay? Uh, so I went with better quality equipment. Now, inch and a half, I have uh, a video I'll add in. But it basically, I show you cut how I cut this down. All right, and I start when I cut it. I started cutting it with the cap on, so the cap would uh, uh, also be on. Okay, uh, I hope.
already pre-drilled a hole there and here for the uh, bolt to go through. And I've tested, test fitted all that. Um, here is, this is Larry Puckett's, this is a screen uh, capture from Larry Puckett, his wiring diagram. Okay. And in case you don't know, here's the uh, battery, the negative ion generator, all right, the uh, momentary push button, and the LED with resistor. Okay, and the positive and negatives labeled on them all. Pretty straightforward wiring. Uh, as Larry discussed in his video, you can buy these things with any number of different leads on them. All right, the best is just getting the two wires in, two wires out. Uh, there's a link in this, there'll be a link down below in this video with uh, where I got this on eBay. Uh, and again, that link, you know, the auction may be over and may not be available, but at least it'll show you what this is. So you, hopefully you can find another one, okay? Uh, likewise, there's a link uh, from Amazon where to get your nine volt connectors. And again, on Amazon, the LED. And on Amazon, the, uh, the push button connectors. Okay, so uh, I had this. My wife had this in the house. She graciously donated it. I had the PVC. I had the nuts and bolts. Uh, I had, did have to go out and get some JB Weld because I'm going to have to what cut this out to add in some screen. Okay. And uh, I have a roll of metal screening. Now you can get aluminum screening, you need fiberglass screen. Don't use the fiberglass screening because it's not going to conduct the electricity. This is just the standard screening. It's metal. All right. Uh, that's what I went with. I also have one little term crimp on terminal connector that I'll be using. So. Uh, Let's go ahead and get the handle prepped. You know, I'll, once I figure out where everything's going in here, I will cut it down to size uh, and get everything wired up and shoved in. It, it, the thing that's going to take the longest is the epoxy of the screen, the screen here. The screen inside here, because I'm not attaching the wire to here. Uh, unlike this one, which is charged, um, it is actually, so they say, more beneficial not to charge this screen, but to put a screen on the back that's charged so that the grass is already in the field, in the ion field, as it goes through the screen. Okay? Supposedly that supercharges the effect. We'll see. Uh, based upon Larry Puckett's results, it, it sure seemed like. Uh, so that's the way I'm going with it. All right, so first thing I want to do, I've already got the drill bit sized uh, for the LED light. And the LED light's just an indicator to make sure you know when the button is pushed that you have current flowing, okay? Uh, if you don't have that, you don't know whether the current's flowing. And that was one of the biggest issues with this and one of the buttons I had. I put down a whole lot of static grass when there was, the button was bad and there was no charge. So this uh, uh, version design will show you uh, better. So we're gonna put a hole here. And we have the bulb fits down through here. Okay. And there's a very little nut somewhere. This one here. That we will on with. One thing Larry Puckett found out the hard way is he <laughs> he epoxied his basket onto this 
to this arm and had some additional support things. Um, I am not doing that. That's I am. That's why I'm using this terminal strip here. I don't have to epoxy. I want to be able to take it apart. I'd be able to uh, make a, put a bigger one or smaller one of these on if I wanted uh, because it'll all come apart. And this little LED does have a little washer on it so you, you can get some tight compression. If I had a little wrench, I could tighten this. And that's what I'm going to go get, a little wrench. So, stay tuned. And I'm back with a new crescent wrench. Alright, got that tightened on. <clears throat> now we're going to have to do some soldering for this switch, but let's just get a feel for how we want this all to lay out. I'll put this here. Alright. Yeah, I think that's good. So now I need another hole here. So, when all else fails, we use the super tool. And you may be asking yourself, what is the super tool? Well, Dremel to the rescue. Or Dremel. bit bigger. There we go. See? But we have to 
wire up some leads first. Break out our soldering uh, stuff. Get the nut off of here. on to there. We have to put a resistor in line on this. Uh, that. And now we got to connect it. Yeah, so stay tuned. So after a quick trip to the hardware store, the standard screen is not metal. It's plastic. Now, who would have thought standard screen to be plastic? I would have thought it would have been enough. So, that won't work. Right. Um, so I went and got some aluminum screen, which is a fine mesh. But I also went and got some eighth inch hardware cloth. Okay. And uh, uh, it looks to be uh, uh, much better. It's galvanized for durability. And uh, what I will use it for is I am betting I can find another one of these and I can have two different size screens on here. All right, for the different size uh, static rest, the finer screen for the two mil and then the uh, hardware cloth for the four, six, and eight mil. Uh, I'm thinking. So that is the game plan. So the next thing to do would be to uh, make our cut on uh, here to figure out the size screening we need to epoxy into this. So move some things aside here. And let me go get my Sharpie, which is eluding me this morning. Now we can take this and put it over our screening uh, to cut the size we want. So I think we'll start with the uh, aluminum, the finer mesh for now. Uh,
Okay. <clears throat> so I got the screen and cut, both for the lid, which will have to be epoxied in place, and for the electrical charge up here. So, with that in mind, what we need to do is for the generator here, we need to attach the terminal that will go over the bolt. Terminal piece went where? It's here. I know it's here. Just better finding it. There it is. So we're going to attach it, crimp it onto this wire. go good and snug All right, then go on here another washer then the reservoir through the screening So, just so you get a picture of this, you have the bolt and you got a nut on the, I mean a washer on the outside. Then you have a washer, then you have the terminal connector, then another washer, then the reservoir, then another washer. What we're doing is we're clamping everything down between the washers, okay? Then the next screen, May have to make a hole. Oh, it went right through. That's good. So it's going to give us our charge. Then another washer. And another nut. Okay. Or a nut. Now, what that does is. Unlike others that are, these baskets are epoxied on, this one's not. So it can be taken apart. Phillips head screwdriver. Right. Get that wire truck around the correct way. Now my uh, bolt's a little long, but that's okay. All right. So, you can see the screen in there that's clamped down between the washers. You see the connector, and everything will just get pushed back in through here. Okay. I may have to undo it to get it in there or loosen it up some, but that's okay. You're getting the idea of how it's going to work. Right. So that's one side. 
These are the big wires. This I'll extend and uh, put a alligator clip to. That will be our field for uh, to create the static charge that the static grass passes down. Right. So, next step is to epoxy uh, this screen into the lid. Even though it would clamp on, um, it'll just make it a little better. Okay, stay tuned. All right, so here we go with the epoxy. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the screen, add a bead. And it self mixes in this applicator. Comes out. Got a bead set. Now let's add some more on this side of the screen. Bucket was right. Epoxy goes everywhere. Right. Here I, uh, I'm going to use one of these, a uh, few of these. Okay, so here we have it, the supercharged uh, version of the static grass applicator. Uh, again, this one ran on three volts. This is nine volts. Right? And uh, puts out a heck of a lot more static charge. Um, the wiring was pretty straightforward. For the dot wiring diagram I showed earlier, you can go back, pause it to take a look. Um, connecting the Tupperware was relatively easy. You've got a, a bolt and a washer. Comes through, you have a washer, then the wire on a round terminal strip that I showed you earlier, then another washer, then through the Tupperware, then another wa uh, washer, then the screen, then another washer, then the nut, okay? Tighten it down, and everything's secure. Now, I have two different uh, screen. This is more for two mil, two to four mil. This is uh, uh, probably six mil and higher. Okay, uh, I suspect using this one the most, but we'll see. It has the availability to switch them, so I went ahead and I made them up. And uh, you have the indicator light, on the momentary switch, All right, and you should have arcing, and it does. Let me turn off the lights, maybe you'll be able to see them a little bit better. All right. You can certainly hear it, so there you go. Supercharged static grass, static grass applicator that I'll put to use uh, uh, later today. All right, I want to thank you for joining me here on the Retirement Railroad Matinee Modeling. 
tip of the day. Uh, again, I'm Steve, and you all have a great day. Bye now.